always, good to be with you on the program tonight. Uh, as we try to set up to do these television programs each and every week, we set our minds on a particular area to go, but the news then becomes so rapid and events taking place around the world so fast and in America. Uh, e events that really can't be overlooked, biblically speaking, applying biblical uh, knowledge to those particular things that's taking place. It is uh, the fulfillment, uh, at least in the beginning stages of the fulfillment, and maybe the end of it, of Matthew chapter 24, where the Lord told us that there would be these particular signs that would come before the end would come. And the signs of which he said would come would be earthquakes and famines and all types of situations developing around the world and earthquakes in divers places, which means that it's earthquakes in, in, in different places, places that it's never been before. But as I've pointed out many times um, in the teachings through the years, the Bible was not, and Jesus was not in Matthew 24, telling us that these signs would be unique signs or things would be, this would be the first time that it would happen when he said there would be wars and rumors of wars and, and earthquakes and pestilence and famines. That's not what he was saying. In verse 8, you see what he was telling us. He said that this would be the beginning of sorrows. And the word there in the Greek for beginning of sorrows is birth pangs. He was not saying that it would be the first set of earthquakes. It would be the first time that nations had gone to war. From the beginning of time, nations have gone to war. And we'll continue. From the beginning of time, there's been earthquakes. There's been pestilence. There's been famine. From the beginning of time. But he locked it in and gave us clear understanding on what he was talking about as focusing on the last days and the events that would happen and how they would happen before the last days would come, before the end would come. And that would be the end of the church age. He said that it would be his birth pains, the beginning of sorrows. What he likened these troubles to that we're seeing now, and it's literally coming to pass, what he likened it to was a woman travailing with child an impregnated woman going through the phases of child delivery. As the child would get closer and closer to being birthed, the birth pains gets closer and closer and closer together. So what the Lord was telling us about these events, not that they would be new, not that they would be unique, but that the events would, would roll one on top of the other, just as a woman travailing in pain. And when we would see these things taking place, as a woman giving birth, no longer scattered events and years between the events and major events happening every few years, but every day, every single day, as a woman travailing with child, we would know then that a child was fixing to be birthed. Now, following through the scriptures, it's clear to see the child that it is going to birth. These birth pangs, these world troubles, these world conflicts that you see happening now, one behind the other, telling us that something is about to be birthed. It is the birth of Antichrist. We're seeing the Antichrist system set up all around us right now. Everything, everything in detail being set up around us. The mark of the beast, the 666, which is a UPC barcode, universal product code, Revelation 13, 16 through 18 said that the number would be 666, 666, and that without it, no man could buy, sell, or trade. It's universal. It deals with product. It deals with commerce. It deals with the economy. It deals with your money and your ability to buy. And now you have a UPC, universal product code, that is framed in three sixes. As I've shared with you many times before, I have the manufacturer's blueprint on that, and I have personally spoke to the man that created the UPC barcode. It's framed in three sixes. The two long lines at the beginning is a six, the two long lines in the middle is a six, read by the computer is a six, and the two long lines at the end are read by the computer is six. The UPC barcode is framed in three sixes. The Bible is telling us and told us in graphic detail the things that was going to take place, and they are taking place exactly as the Bible told us. These birth pains, this group of individuals that the Bible tells us will gain control of the world, Antichrist and those that embrace him and, and, and aid him into power. The Bible simply tells us 
seven years based upon the Jewish calendar. That's how long the tribulation period will be. That equals 2,520 days. And that if that day, that last day, was not shortened, the Bible said that no flesh would be saved. Meaning that the people of which is taking over this world are absolute, total destroyers. Everything they touch, they destroy. Why? Because they are of the destroyer. They are of Satan. They are Satan's children. Pure and simple. Absolutely guaranteed. All anyone has to have is a basic knowledge and understanding of the Bible to see this clearly. It will take these people, once they get full control of the world, and that is what they are doing, once they get full control of the world, it will take this bunch only 2,520 days to, de to destroy the entire human race, except Jesus would return on that day and shorten that day, no flesh would survive none. They are destroyers. Who are they? They're the mindset that took over Detroit. Liberals. There's been only liberal blacks to run Detroit since 1959. No Republican mayors, none. The third richest uh, city in the world and turned it into a dust bowl of hell today that looks like a nuclear bomb went off in it. They have taken Chicago and turned it into the murder capital of the world. The 10 poorest cities in this nation has been run by Democrats, no Republicans in some of them ever, for a total of more than 380 years combined. And they're the 10 poorest cities. Wherever these people go, they destroy it. Whoever these people claim that they are going to help, they destroy them. The history is full of it. In Russia, these socialist communists was going to help everybody. And they starved their people to death, couldn't even make trains run. They stood in eight-hour bread lines with all the help these socialist communists brought to them. While those that were supposed to help when they got in power, led them into poverty and starvation. They still ate caviar and drank wine, rode around in limousines, and flew around on airplanes wherever they wanted to go. Venezuela, once a th thriving society, now today, no bread, no food, no toilet paper, nothing on the shelves. Chavez, fellow who Obama hugged his neck, Chavez came in, took it over. Now the one that followed him after his death. Now there's nothing to eat there. There's nothing on the shelves. There's nothing there. These are destroyers. And the same people today that did that in Moscow, has done that in every socialist country, did that in Venezuela, did that to, to, to Chicago, did that to Detroit City, are the same ones now that is in Washington, D.C., called Democrats, the very people that's coming across these borders, fleeing from a wicked, tyrannical governments around the world, from Mexico, South America, starvation and want, fleeing those governments, coming to America, the great place of hope, is being deceived by the very people. They're bringing you in to get you to vote for them. And then they're going to bring this country to the same place they brought Russia, Venezuela, and every other country they have ever touched in their lives. They are demonic destroyers, pure and simple. And the events now are happening over and over and over, just as a woman travailing with child. Now, one of the most, uh, I, I guess probably one of the questions it is asked to me, and I don't say that I'm the man qualified to email. I'm just saying the questions that is most oftentimes asked to me is Christians around the nation is calling and wanting to know. They're confused about the election that's coming up. They're confused about the vote. They're confused about Donald Trump. They seem to know in their minds, those that call me, that the other one, Mrs. Clinton, is certainly not the answer but what do I do as a Christian with Donald Trump? 
So I'm going to answer that question tonight, hopefully that it'll stop me from having to answer it 10,000 times over, and I can answer it this one time. It's a true and legitimate concern. As Christians, you see a particular characteristic trait, a particular nature that kind of rubs against you. It's fine and good. What should you do? There is a story in the Bible that immediately God took me back to as I also was contemplating the same things. And the story that God took me back to in my mind instantly was a story in 2 Kings chapter 7 and verse 3 is the portion that I'd speak on. There was four leprous men at the gate of Samaria. The problem was, was that the Syrian army had encircled the city, as was their custom. They were barbaric murderers, and they circled the city. And what they would do was they would starve the people to death until finally they just simply surrendered the city. Nothing could come in, nothing could go out. The Bible tells us in, in, in the story that I'm telling you of that it had gotten already so bad that they had began eating their own infant children. That's how bad it was. The Bible tells us that there was four leprous men that ran to the gate. It's within human nature. Uh, in dealing with problems sometimes, the first thing that we want to do is run. But there's a limit to how far you can run. You are going to have to deal with and you are going to have to tend to your problems. If you don't, those problems will grow. One problem will beget another problem until finally you got so many problems you don't know which way is up or down. You have to deal with your problems. You have to do it on your feet with a sober mind and with God by your side. You must deal with your problems. Now, with that said, these four leprous men sit at the gate as long as they possibly could. Most likely they had food. That's probably one of the reasons they fled the city was to protect what they had. But soon enough the provisions ran out and reality dawned on them. And one of them said to the other, said, why sit we here until we die? The other said, well, if we go back, said, let us reason together. The other said, let us, if we go back into the city, we shall die there because the famine is in the city. The other said, well, if we, we move forward, if we move out into the very enemy's hands, they may feed us, they may kill us, but we're dead anyway. Sometimes the decisions that you have to make, none of them offers you much hope at all. Dead if I stay, dead if I go back, and most likely dead if I go forward. But what do you do? There's only one thing to do. A 1% chance of survival may not sound like much, and it's not. But a 1% chance will forever trump a 0% chance. Staying where we're at, the four leprous men said we are dead. Returning back to the city from whence we came, we are dead. There is only one thing we can do. Follow the odds. And the odds are not good, but they're better than sitting here. And they're better than going back. A 1% odd, a 1% chance is a million times better than 0% chance. With that and with that story, I locked it in my mind. I don't know if Mr. Trump's going to do all the things he says he's going to do or not. I don't know if I can fully trust him. I don't know. I don't know. But this I do know. I do know who it is running against him. She's been there for many, many, many years. And there has never been a liar to ever grace the face of this earth like this woman. That's not my personal opinion, and I wouldn't dare slander her any more than I would dare slander anybody else. If anybody in this world has faced the venom and the wrath of demonic slander against his name, it's been me. I wouldn't do it to a dog. Miss Clinton is a liar proven over and over and over and over. She is a crook proven over and over and over. She is a pathological liar proven over and over and over and over again. Even Louis Farrakhan 
can't miss this one. Have you voting for Hillary? You don't have to raise your hands. I do not blame you for wanting a female president. But that's a wicked woman. Never dreamed I'd ever see the day that me and Louis Farrakhan would agree on who to vote for. But this one is so clear. This one's so obvious that a fool cannot miss it. So what am I saying? Very simply. I don't know what you think the chances are with Mr. Trump, but at least there is a chance. He might do it. He might do what he says. I don't know. This is what I do know. I do know that Jesus Christ is not on the ballot. If the Lord Jesus Christ was on the ballots, I would vote for Jesus. But Jesus is not on the ballots. And Jesus is not going to be the President of the United States. He's not. He's not going to be voted for. And if you go and write his name in, he's still not going to come down and be the President of the United States. Jesus Christ is not on the ballot. There are only two people on the ballot, and now some third thing that jumped in who has no chance of winning, who's not there to win. He is there to try to siphon votes off of Mr. Trump because they want him to lose. This third party candidate, it's too late for him now to even get on the ballot in Texas, the biggest state there is, practically. Uh, the, the, the biggest Republican state that there is, probably California also, too late to get on that ballot. Too late to get on ballots. He's not there to even try to win. He's there to try to make somebody lose. Nonetheless, what we see is clear and simple. Like the four leprous men at the gate of Samaria. There ain't but one way of which you can even hope to survive this. An extension of Obama, the crookedest, corrupt, most corrupt man that has ever stepped foot inside the White House. And there's been plenty of corruption before him, but none that can even match this law-breaking Antichrist. There's only one hope. I'm not talking Republicans and Democrats. I'm talking Hillary Clinton, of whom I know, and you know, and all the evidence you need to know, you can Google it up and YouTube it coming out of her own mouth. And Donald Trump. Chances may be slim and none, but I will guarantee you if any good's coming to this nation, it'll come by a Trump presidency and not a Clinton presidency. That is why I am voting for Donald Trump 100%. Now, we find ourselves in very serious times. And as I said at the beginning of the program, we find ourselves with major events taking place one behind the other. Things that can barely be explained and still the media will not even address the issue as it is. In the magnitude, in the scope as that it really exists. We have seen one terrorist act take place after another. We saw this take place in Orlando. We then saw the Justice Department under Barack Obama come out and take out everything that the man said that did the shooting. He was calling 911. He was talking and being recorded on 911. He was sending text messages while he was killing. He was saying he was doing it in the name of ISIS, saying that he was of ISIS, saying he, he was doing it in the name of Allah, hollering Allah Akbar, whatever it is they say, praise to Allah as he was killing them. It's all recorded. The Justice Department took every bit of that and took it out until they got caught and then Miss Lynch, the Justice Department, head of the Justice Department, the Attorney General, refuses to tell who it was that said to take all that out. Well, we know who it was said take all of that out. To turn Allah into God. To remove every reference to ISIS that the man said. It was Barack Obama, the same one that issued the command to the FBI six years ago to take everything pertaining to Islam, Muslims, radical Islam and terrorism out of the FBI playbooks, and they did. If this is not aiding and abetting the enemy, my friend, nothing in this world is. These people who swore to kill us, who swore to kill us, 
swore to kill us. These people who said, we are going to kill you and going to kill your children. And they are doing it. It's not an idle threat whereby I am now trying to stir up emotion for some ill-gotten motive. They said, I am going to kill you and I am going to kill your children. And they are doing it. And the government that is supposed to protect us is hiding them from us, covering for them, and threatening imprisonment on us if we utter a word, speak a word, or do anything about it. If this is not treason, it does not exist. If this is not aiding and abetting an enemy, it does not exist. What is my point and my purpose for all of this in saying this? Very simple. We are in the days of which the Lord spoke of. And in those days of which the Lord spoke of, it's vitally important that you understand this. He said, let not your hearts be troubled. He said that men's hearts would fail them for the fear of the things that they see coming upon the, the earth in that day. Men's hearts shall fail them. But he said, ye shall rejoice. So I'm simply telling you what to do. I'm telling you, do not trouble your mind over and over and over with all of the details of all of this mess. You know what it is, and I know what it is. What do we do about it? Each and every one of us, here's what you do. Each and every soul in America that sees this as the garbage that it is, that sees this as what it is, even Louis Farrakhan sees the wickedness of these that seek power and this one that is running for president. What do you do? You do what you're supposed to do. Forget the details of it. I don't need the details and I don't need to clutter my mind with hours of research and trying to find and prove what Barack Obama is, what this Justice Department is doing and what's going on in our land. I know what he is. I know what he's doing. I've known who he was. I knew what he was doing and what he was going to do before he became the president. No need to clutter my mind and worry myself about digging and trying to figure where to go. No, no, no. What you do is you rejoice. And you rejoice in this. That you know what's happening. And what do you do about it? The only thing that you can do. And the only thing that you can do is do what you're supposed to do. Jesus is not on the ballot, my brothers and sisters. He's not going to be the president of the United States of America. You have a chance, be it slim, none, whatever you think, with Donald Trump. You have no chance at all with Hillary Clinton. We are dead if we stay where we're at. We're dead if we go back to the Obama administration. There ain't but one hope that lies before us in this natural world. And it is Mr. Trump. And again, I am not espousing favor in any way for liberals, Democrats, Republicans, none of them. I'm talking about two people, one of which I ain't sure, another one of which I am sure. What do you do? You cry and you sigh against the abomination of the land. That's what you do. You don't have to worry your brain and get in frantic frizzes and run around. Your heart is not going to fail you. Your heart is going to rejoice. Your heart's going to rejoice because we know what's going on. We know why it's happening. So what am I going to do? I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to cry out against the evil and I'm going to go vote for the only one that offers us any possible hope at all here in this physical world of which we live. We have physical responsibilities. We have natural responsibilities. God does not come down and make every decision for us. And the person that is in power over you or the person who is leading you in government does not always have to be a Christian, nor does it have to be a pastor. It has to be a leader that will follow the Constitution and prevent those from killing us 
who has sworn that they will kill us and they are killing us. The only other president to equal the destruction of Barack Obama was Jimmy Carter, a Sunday school teacher. You've got two choices. A preacher ain't on the ballot and Jesus ain't on the ballot. You got two choices. One in whom you have some kind of chance or at least some hope. The other, you know exactly what you're going to get. Let not your hearts be troubled. Do what you're supposed to do. I'd like to take a load off of you Just put it on my back and I I carry it too You look like you could use a day or two to Get yourself some rest now And while you do I'll carry that load for you Now all of these troubles and our chores alone You my brothers and my sisters and this is our home oh, Won't you take yourself a day or two And get yourself some rest now And while you do, I'll carry that load for you Oh, oh that's the way it should be Help you and you help me. We've got to live as brothers. We've got to have some love one toward another. I'd like to take a load off of you. Just put it on my back and now I carry it too. You look like you could use a day. Get yourself some rest now And while you do I'll carry that load for you Brothers, it got to be some love.